Hello grade 12s and welcome to this lesson on inverse of a quadratic function. In this lesson, we are going to learn how we restrict the domain so that the inverse of the quadratic function is a function. Let us join Karen as she introduces this concept to her learners. In one of our previous lessons, we started to investigate the inverse of the function that squares the inputs. Now, when we looked at the flow diagram for this function, we encountered some problems. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. We said that we can't have a function that takes in 4 and produces minus 2 on one occasion and 2 on another. Are we going to solve that problem today? Yes, hopefully we'll be applying what we learned about the relationship between a function and its inverse. Using the idea of reflection about the line y equals x. When a linear function is reflected about y equals x, it produces the inverse of the function, which is also a linear function. And when an exponential function reflected about the y equals x, it produces the graph of the logarithmic function. That was really clever. It seems to me that we could actually draw the inverse function of a function using reflection. Then we'd avoid having to do all that point-by-point -point work drawing. That was an excellent observation, Tsuboho, and one that we'll be using in our very next problem. Let's start out by stating our task as follows. Determine by investigation the inverse of f of x if f of x equals ax to the power of 2. In simple terms, determine the inverse function of a quadratic function. Okay, let's look at the monitor. Here I have the graph of a typical quadratic function, f of x equals x squared. If I understood our earlier discussion, then all we need is the line y equals x. And if we reflect that function about this line, then we should get the graph of the inverse function. Let's do just that and see what we get. Wow, and now all that we have to do is to determine the equation of this beautiful function. Small problem. Oh, what? Is this inverse actually a function? Remember the vertical line test? Hmm, I see what you mean. This red graph here has two y values for each x value, and that is not allowed for a function. I give up. How do we fix this? Let me show you. Now this one we solve by placing restrictions on the function whose inverse we want to find. Sindiswa, what is the key problem that we have in terms of determining the equation of the inverse function? I guess the problem is that it isn't a function. There are two values for y for every value of the x. There's a curve above the x-axis and another one below the x-axis. Quite right, and the way to solve our problem is to make one of the curves disappear. Disappear? Really? How do we do that? Here's the trick. If I could make one of the two arms of the original function disappear, then the corresponding arm on the inverse would disappear and we'd be left with a single arm, a function. Pretty neat. But how do you do that algebraically? If y equals x squared has two arms and we only want one. Like this. We know that the function f of x is given by the equation y equals x squared. Now if we place a restriction on the x values and say that we're only interested in the positive values of x, then all we do is write that x must be greater than zero. Then in terms of the graph, what that does is to exclude the left hand arm of the quadratic, leaving us with the right arm only. If we now reflect that about the line y equals x, then we get this curve, which is a function and whose equation can be determined using algebra. Now can you find out how to find the equation for the inverse of this function? Well, I guess we could use Tebuch's trick of swapping the y's and the x's around in this formula. That means I can write the inverse of f as x equals y squared. Is that right? Carry on. Well, I can rewrite that as y squared equals x. And to get y by itself, I simply take the square root on both sides of the equation to get y equals the square root of x squared. Hang on, we've been told that whenever you square root both sides of the equation, you must write down plus and minus in front of the square root sign. You're right, Sindiswa, but think very carefully about the values we are using here for the input of the function f. Ah, I see. The domain has been restricted 
to only include x values greater than zero. So that means that we must be looking for an output from the inverse that are also greater than zero. Does that mean I can write the equation of the inverse as y equals the square root of x squared? Yes, you're correct. You see, a square root sign, as you have written it here, does mean only positive values for y equals the square root of x. But to avoid any misunderstanding, we can write in a plus sign in front of the square root sign. Now remember that we defined an inverse function of a function as a function which does the reverse of the original function. We have also noticed that a graph of the inverse function of a function is given by a reflection of the graph about the line y equals x when the function is a linear function and an exponential function. Can you now see why it is not true for all functions? Yes, I see that when a quadratic function is reflected about the line y equals x, the new graph is not a function but a relation. So it really isn't an inverse function. That's true. Inverses of functions are not all functions. But by restricting the domain of the original function, we can get an inverse function by reflection. In this way, we can get the equation of the inverse function too. Well done. That was a good introduction. Let's go over what we've just learned. The inverse of a quadratic function is not a function because there are two y values for every single x value. Now, the vertical line cuts the graph twice at any given point. To fix this, we restrict the domain of the function about the turning point. But, what if we have a turning point which is not on the y-axis? This function has a turning point at 3, 4. The inverse of this function looks like this. As we can see on the graph, the vertical line cuts our graph twice. Therefore, the inverse is not a function. To make this a function, we need to restrict the domain of the original function. The domain is restricted so that the x values are greater than or equal to 3. The inverse of this function looks like this. It is now a function because the vertical line would cut it only once at any point of the graph. The domain of our quadratic function can be restricted such that the x values are equal or less than 3. This means the inverse will look like this. Notice how the restriction in the function's domain has resulted in a change in the range of the inverse. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to look at the Functions and Inverses task video. You will also learn more about functions on our website. That's www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Until then, goodbye.